Hi, I'm Jessica Rudnicki with Reynolds & Reynolds. Welcome back to Connected. Today, I'm speaking with Naked Line Marketing Account Manager, Travis Hafer, about evaluating marketing strategies and setting realistic timelines for results. Let's get connected. Hi, Travis. It's great to have you on the podcast today. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having me, Jessica. Of course. Well, Travis, I'd like to talk to you today about evaluating marketing results and budgets. So as an account manager for Naked Line Marketing, you help dealers identify areas of opportunity in their marketing and it kind of adjusts their strategies to generate better results, right? So when you're helping dealers build these new strategies and really laying out the timelines with them, what's the first thing that you look at in their marketing? Uh, well, first and foremost, with, with a lot of the changes that have gone over, you know, on over the last few years, um, it's ex extremely important to have a, a clean database. Um, that's probably the, the primary thing that I really begin almost every conversation with a dealer on, uh, regardless of, of interest, whether it's new cars, used cars, or, or fixed operations. Um, because if you want to get the most out of it, the most relevant, most up-to-date uh, current customers, um, specifically for, you know, your database that's really good to know. so um you know this means like cleaning out your, you know your crm of old email addresses uh, making sure they're in the actual correct format uh actually home addresses you know i recently moved two years ago and i still get communications from uh dealerships back in ohio where i used to live so and that was two years ago um and then of course then title transfers uh is really another piece if we're going to be sending out uh, again, whether it's sales or uh, service-related items. Okay, awesome. So now you mentioned VIN title transfers as one of those key pieces to clean up. So I am not familiar with that. So can you sp explain that to me and our viewers? Yeah, uh, essentially it's, you know, do they own the vehicle that we think they do? So if we're going to send uh, Jessica uh, and a uh, marketing piece on her 2015, uh, you know, XYZ make model, uh, we want to make sure that you actually still own it. So checking with the uh, state DMV to make sure that that record uh, is still tied to your name and, and everything like that uh, really just allows us to make sure that we tie the person to the vehicle. Uh, if not, you kind of make some changes from there. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you for explaining that. Um, and I imagine that having, you know, that solid foundation that you mentioned, um, cleaning out your database helps with every other part of a dealership's marketing strategy, and it helps that strategy succeed. Um, so that's really great information to know. Travis, a deal if a dealership has their name file optimized and they're starting off with a clean, fresh customer database, um, what and they and they want to start looking at their SEO, for example, or their social or or digital advertising strategies. When they're evaluating those budgets and timelines, what sort of expectations should they have? Yeah, so you know when you're looking at all of your advertising strategies, uh, again to your point, you know social, uh, SEO, paid search, websites, everything. Uh, having the clean database is really again a foundational piece that kind of leads into everything else. Um, but having something that is, you know, cohesive, uh, consistent, you know, I sold cars 20 years ago and, you know, TV, radio, print, everything had to be consistent back then. Times really haven't changed other than the different resources that we have and the, the different uh, mediums that we use. So having, you know, short-term goals that are, you know, focus on, you know, capturing existing demand, existing opportunities right now. Uh, while also looking at your long-term goals uh, that are focused more maybe on creating future demand, uh, branding, and expanding your market. Those are all kind of uh, key ways to do that. Um, also, you know, just having a lot of ways that, you know, these goals may oppose each other uh, kind of when you start to think about it. But certainly in the terms of the content that you create across the board, um, I always, you know, look at also making sure that it's all encompassing. It, it's got to be nimble enough that it's helping out the new car department, the used car department, and the fixed operations. Even though your focus right now today could be predominantly on just getting more new car sales or more service department. Uh, COVID was a, a prime example of that. People went from heavy focus on sales to really shifting gears to more fixed operations and even making adjustments to that. So that's where having something that is flexible enough 
but all still while looking at your short-term and long-term goals can really help you out. So, um, but marketing for the long haul really should position your brand as a steady, uh, reliable, and you know trustworthy, right? That's why a lot of the people talk about family-owned and, and things like that. So, the traits of business looking to build long-lasting relationships, uh, great customer service. Um, with repeat customers. So uh, as far as budgeting these different strategies, uh, you know, basically what I usually tell my customers is, you know, looking at, you know, three months to kind of really research and get a grasp on what's working for you right now and, and laying that, that groundwork and getting to understand what the audience's needs are versus what the dealer's goals and, and, and objectives are really uh, help you kind of build out that, that correct content that fits that. Um, and then, of course, another five months to kind of review the data and pinpoint which messages and which audiences are working, what aren't working, and be able to modify uh, so that we can best target that. And then keep in mind, you know, basically, even though marketing moves quickly, right, we all, we all know that, um, consistent results do take time, all right? And month over month, year over year, those are all good things if you want to make sure that you, you track uh, to help narrow down what your customers need and what to expect. But also, you know, taking a look at how, you know, your Ford, Chevy, Toyota, Honda dealership is doing versus the, the OEM as a whole, uh, as the, the region, and even down to your local market. Because, you know, if, if your OEM is down 10% and your region is down 8%, but you're only down 2%, year over year, month over month, you're down, but really you're, you're doing better than, than, better than most. Yeah. Well, that's a great point um, and even better expectations to set, you know, kind of from the get-go, Travis. So good things take time, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, I know how tempting it can be. You know, I've been doing this for, for almost a decade now, and it's, it's hard, right? Um, it, it can be to just change your marketing strategy when you don't feel like that moment you're not seeing those immediate results and, and things aren't maybe clicking and, and so forth. But you got to be careful of, of radical movements, especially if you do it too often, um, because then you can maybe almost take the big ship and overcorrect it, right? And if you overhaul your strategy too often, uh, it can really have a negative impact uh, from a short-term and a long-term uh, perspective. So building up the content and the messaging over the long-term is, is definitely better for your business. Absolutely. Great advice. So Travis, if I'm a dealer and I'm trying to get a better idea of when I can expect to start seeing results based off these new strategies that you mentioned, what does that look mm -hmm. like? Yeah, um, you know, it starts with getting uh, exactly on the same page uh, with your, your marketing partner and, and setting and what the expected goals are, okay? Um, you know, I always have fun because, you know, everybody likes to say, Hey, so this, this new dealer that we just brought on to the Naked Line, why did they sign up? And I'm like, they want to sell more cars and they want to service more customers, right? Okay, that's the obvious. So the more we understand exactly in addition to that what the dealer wants and, and needs are, then the better we can help them out. So, you know, number one, I would say you got to look at um, not only your plan to obtain the goals that, that are set forth, uh, the month over month, year over year, et cetera but you want to evaluate and, and review those results monthly, but also, you know, at a three month mark, six month mark, 12 month mark, so that you can constantly be adjusting based off of, you know, what's going on in the market and, and everything else. Uh, after a year or so of a, of a good established, consistent marketing strategy, what you should be able to see and, and be able to review and, and track is one, uh, where you were at before you made the change. So, uh, we always like to establish a baseline with our dealers when we first bring them on board with Naked Line, regardless of which products, services, uh, packages they go with. Um, two, how your results and your business have improved. Okay, again, keeping in mind that there may be other variables at hand, and you can't just look strictly at uh, you know month over month, year over year. You got to look at those other things: how you're doing, stacking up with your OEM and your region and your local market. And then three, you know, what have you learned about your market and your audiences? Ideally, we want our dealers to come away learning more about the business, even though they may not necessarily be an expert in, you know, digital marketing per se. How did, you know, addressing how to better price, uh, you know, their audience uh, or, you know, this messaging, this type of, you know, information, how did their, uh, their customers get out from that? Awesome. 
Well, that's very insightful, Travis. So thank you for sharing those tips um, and steps with our viewers. Before we hop off today, is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience? Uh, you know, the biggest thing that I would say is, is now is a great time to be, you know, really kind of coming back, taking that, that 10,000 foot view, view of your, your dealership, um, what you're doing at, at, that, at the store from a marketing advertising perspective. And, and keeping in mind that, you know, you can have great marketing, great results, um, but you got to also look at your, your people, your process at the dealership level as well, because it, it does become a marriage. And the, the more you communicate together, uh, the, the better off you're going to be in the long term. I love that. It, it is like a marriage. So thank you for sharing that. And yep. thank you again for being here today. Not a problem. Appreciate the time. Travis shared some great information on how much time you should give your dealership to start seeing marketing results. Before we hop off, just a quick reminder, you can watch or listen to past and future podcast episodes on YouTube or Apple and Spotify podcasts by searching for The Connected Podcast. Subscribe on these channels to get notified every other Wednesday when new episodes are released. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in two weeks. Mm -hmm.